Okay, so this is now quadratics revisited. So the idea of this lesson is a brief overview of what we did last week in terms of x squared plus bx plus c and then ax squared plus bx plus c. Then we're going to do some questions for examples um, and do a few more questions than we did last week so you can see them in action. So x squared plus bx plus c, starting with our planar option. Coefficient of x squared is one, so we don't have to worry about it. We know that we are heading for x and x, and the only thing we've got to deal with is the numbers. So how do we get those numbers? That is our lovely little statement. Where we go, factors of c, in this case, which add or subtract if we had minus c to give b. So our sine of c and our sine of b then tell us, so this is how we get our numbers. So what is going in here and what is going in here? The next part of the story is what signs do we put in between here? What goes in here and what goes in here? And that's where we use the signs of C and B. So if we look at the sign of C, it can be a plus C or it can be a minus C. If we have a plus C, what we are saying is that both signs are the same. So we would have X plus and X plus, or we would have X minus and X minus. Let us reorganize our space slightly. The joys of digital lessons. If we have minus C, we are saying that the signs are different. So those signs in those brackets aren't going to match anymore. For example, we're going to have an X plus and an X minus, or we could have X minus X plus. So how do we know what we've got? How do we know if we've got plus plus or minus minus if we have a plus C? How do we know which one's plus and which one's minus if we have a minus C? That is the information that gives us from this sign of B. So our sign of C tells us um, the, the, the bracket sign pattern. Do we have plus, plus, minus, minus, or different? Okay, the sign of B is going to tell us which signs where. So in reality, when we have plus C, it's easy, okay? So if we have plus C, then both brackets get the sign of B. So if we had plus B, we would have X plus X plus. If we have minus B, then we would have X minus X minus. Okay, because we have plus C, both signs are the same, and it's a sign of B that tells us what signs go in those brackets. If we have minus C, then the signs are different. And it's the sign of B that gets attached to the larger value. So larger value gets the same sign as B. 
So that's a little bit harder here because we don't have numbers. So we can't say which one is the larger and which one is the smaller. So that one you'll see more in, in, in process when we actually do some questions. Okay, so this is when we have a coefficient of x squared, which is equal to one. We're using our factor sentence to get the numbers for our brackets. Factors of C, which add or subtract to give B, depending on what sign we've got here. So that's our first step. What numbers are involved? Okay, our second step is what sign pattern are we looking at? Okay, do we have a plus C, signs same, minus C, signs different, or do we have which one of those? Then which sign goes where based on our sign of B? Right, let's see this in action. So for example, we have x squared minus 6x plus 9. So we are now looking for factors of 9 which add to give 6. Well, that would be 3 and 3. So we know we have an x, we know we have an x. And in this case, 3 times 3 is 9, 3 plus 3 is 6, so 3 and 3. We have plus c, so both brackets must have the same sign. And which sign is that? Well, we have minus b, so the sign must be minus. It must match the sign of b. Okay, so x squared plus 10x plus 25. Again, we have x with the coefficient, x squared coefficient one, so x in each bracket. We then use the same factor statement. Factors of 25, which add to give 10. So, this is a bit boring. Factors of 25, which add to give 10 is five and five. We've got plus C, we've got like signs. We've got, in this case, sine of B is plus, so we must have plus in both brackets. Okay, hopefully you're happy. Hopefully you are carrying alongside and you are managing these. So, x squared minus 7x minus 18. Same story. What we're gonna do here is coefficient x squared is one, set up our brackets. So there's a rhythm that you get into. And that's why um, if you're struggling with these, I really recommend that you ask for extra ones to do. Because as you do them, you get into this rhythm and when you find your rhythm, it becomes easier. So we've set up our x's now. Factors of 18 which subtract to give us seven. So you should be comfortable with your factors by now. Factors of 18 are, that are gonna subtract to seven, nine and two. Now, minus C, we're gonna need one plus and one minus. How do we know which sign goes where? Remember the bigger number is going to match the B sign. B sign is a minus, therefore we need minus on the bigger number, so we need minus nine plus two. Hopefully you know nine is bigger than two. Yeah. Right, next question x squared plus 8x minus 33. Okay, coefficient of x squared is one. Open the brackets, put the x's. Factors of 33, which subtract to give us eight. It is 11 and three. So, minus 33, different signs in the brackets. Who gets what sign? Plus eight means plus on the bigger number. So bigger number is 11, he gets the plus, he gets the minus. One more for fun. 4x squared minus 16x plus 16. Not quite coefficient of x squared is one, but 
Never try and do something complicated when you can do something easy. Four, sixteen, sixteen. We can get rid of it. This is four. X squared minus four X plus four. And there's an important note here as well. See how that four is still there. I just factorized him out. I can't get rid of him completely because I don't have it equal zero. I can't do it to both sides. So I'm not getting rid of, I'm not solving. I am just factorizing. And when I'm just factorizing, I must always be able to expand back to my original question. So, in this case, we're now going to factorize this guy in the middle. But I have done something very funny with my computer. Okay, right, there we go. So, we keep our four. We have our two brackets with our x's. So now we are looking for factors of four which add to give four. Well, four is that wonderful number where two times two and two plus two give us the same answer. So two. Plus four, both signs are the same. What are they? Minus four, so minus and minus. And if you expanded those brackets and put your four back in, you'd be back to the beginning. But why must we deal with a four next to our x squared when we can take it out and make life easier? Okay, right. So we are now roughly halfway through the lesson. So we shall now move into ax squared plus dx plus c, where a is something more interesting than one. Okay, lots of happy people, brilliant. Right, so if we are dealing with ax squared plus bx plus c, so a doesn't equal one. A is more interesting. Now we are aiming for AX plus D1X. Whoa, what am I doing? Okay, never mind. I'm getting myself confused with my own notes. Okay, AX squared plus BX plus C. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to split this BX term. So we are going to get an ax squared plus d1x plus d2x plus c, okay? But this is based on the fact that this equals our bx term. So how do we know what factors and what sums and what bonds and all of those crazy things that make up numbers, how do we know which ones to use? Okay, we do a similar thing as to before, but we create a new number for our number sentence. So we say A times C equals D. And then we do factors of D, which add to give us B. Okay, and then we're going to look at their signs to see which way we need to put the signs in order to get D1 plus D2 equals B because we might need a subtraction in there, okay? Depending on what we're doing. Then we're going to follow that with two factorizations. One on that pair, one on that pair. Now those are pair factorizations, okay? It's nothing complicated, nothing ugly. So we're gonna factorize that pair, we're gonna factorize that pair, and then we're going to See the magic, which is going to enable us to factorize again two, two brackets. Okay, so let's see this in action. Any question? 6x squared plus 5x minus 4. Okay, so we don't have one for our coefficient of x squared. We have a six. So we must say six times four is 24. Check your time tables, darlings. Now we want factors of 24, which subtract to give us five. So one and 24, two and 12, three and eight. Aha, bingo, there we go. So three and eight. So how are we going to use eight and three to make plus five? 
six x squared plus eight x minus three x minus four. And there we go, eight minus three gives us five. We are happy. We can always double check as we go like this. Now we're going to do those two pairs. So looking just at the first two terms, what can we take out of 6x squared plus 8x? We can take out a 2x. Open the brackets. That leaves us with a 3x, and that leaves us with a 4. Okay, what can we take out of minus 3x minus 4? We can take out a minus 1. Okay, minus. And what are we left with? 3x plus 4. And now do you see the magic? The magic is that both of these terms have 3x plus 4 in them. So we can take out 3x plus 4. What are we left with? 2x minus 1. So we've gone from that quadratic to factorized form. It took us two lines in this case, instead of two, two lines of working to get the answer. Instead of when we just had x squared, we went straight to the answer. But if you're not so comfortable with these ones, take the time. Make sure you get it right. It's still quicker, it's still um, more efficient than using the formula. And it's, it's nice and powerful and it's nice to have that background behind when you go on to doing other types of questions. Okay, if you can do these by inspection, again, don't worry, go for it, do your inspection. This is aimed at the people who are struggling with these questions. Okay, then we need to go back to basics and get solid with that factorization first. Next question, 3x squared plus x minus 2. So we have a is 3, we need to do some funky business. So 3 times 2 gives us 6. Factors of 6 which subtract to give us 1, 3, and 2. So now we rewrite that middle term, 3x squared. We want plus x, so plus 3x minus 2x minus 2. We factorize our first pair, 3x, x plus 1. We factorize our second pair, minus 2, x plus 1. And then we factorize our factorized, x plus 1, 3x minus 2. Now the question has come through of whether it's all right for all these steps to show in your exam. Absolutely. Okay, there is nothing wrong with taking a slightly longer step. Okay, what you might find is that by the time you write your exams, you'll have done so many, you won't need so many steps, but this is perfectly, perfectly acceptable. It is the how you're doing it, it's how your brain is working, so go ahead and show it. Okay, remember, if you were doing this and it was an equation, say equals zero, then you would need that equals zero on every single line of your method. You can't delete it as you do your method and then come back and recreate it in your factorization. So that's the only thing, okay? Show your steps, but keep your entire question whole as you work down. Right, next one. We've done a plus minus, we've done a, another plus minus, let's do something different. Let's do, 3x squared minus 2x minus 8. Okay, so 3x squared. So again, start the same. 3 times 8 equals 24. Factors of 24, which in this case subtract to give us 2. So factors of 24 subtracting to 2 would be a 4 and a 6, I believe. So we're going to split that term. 3x squared, but we want minus 2. So we're going to need minus 6x plus 4x minus 8 in this case. So watch those signs. Don't lose marks because you didn't watch your signs carefully, please, ladies and gentlemen. Right, then it's exactly the same thing, double step factorization. First two terms we can take out, 3x left with x minus 2. Second two terms, we can take out four, left with x minus two. And you see you've got that check. When you do your first two terms correct and your second two terms correct, you should end up with magic, magic, ma magical matching brackets. So take out the common bracket, and what are you left with? 
and another one factorized. Okay, one more. 4x squared plus 7x minus 2. 4x squared, same story. 2 times 4 is 8. Factors of 8 which subtract to give us 7, 1 and 8. So, splitting that middle term, 4x squared. We want plus 7, so we need plus 8x minus x minus 2. Focusing on the first two, common is 4x. Remaining is x plus 2. Focusing on the second two, common is minus 1. Left is magical x plus 2. Then we can take our x plus 2 out and we're left with 4x minus 1. So I'm hoping you're also starting to get the idea that we've got a rhythm here. Okay, not getting many preferences coming through. So we're going to carry on with the ax squared because I tend to find people struggle more with that one. Okay, so let us try 5x squared minus 23x minus 10. Now I'm going to go rather a bit more slowly in the hope that you're going to do these faster than me. So, I'm also going to stop talking so that I don't disrupt you. So hopefully we've ended up in the same place. We said five times 10 is 50. Factors of 50 which subtract to give us 23 is 25 and two. Split that middle term with a minus 25x plus two x. First two, last two. Then second factorization for x minus five, five x plus two. So, another one. I can do these all day because they're nice and they're reliable and they are predictable and they make sense and they are logical, unlike the rest of life. So we're just going to do questions now for the next three minutes. Again, I'm gonna keep quiet so you can get ahead and make sure you can do this one. Okay, so for this one, we said three times one gives us three. Factors of three which subtract to give us two, one and three. Split the middle term with a plus three x. Factorize the first two, factorize the last two, and then there's your factorized format. So the question has come through of where in your textbook can you find practice for this? There is an exercise um, on factorization of quadratics and solving it quadratic equations. So you will find some in there. Um, if you want more than that, I'm not sure what page number it is quite right now, but if you look in the quadratic section, you'll find it. Um, if you want more than that, then, then give me a shout. Um, I've got a few pages of questions which you can factorize and put back and expand and make sure you've got those basics down pat. So again, if you want those extra questions to practice, then remind me on the chat so that I don't forget to send them to you. 